Okay, hello again. Grab my pens. So you may remember this problem from an earlier uh, video. Uh, if you don't, there is a video with this where we draw this uh, cyclohexane and both chair conformations, figure out which one is uh, more uh, stable. So in this one, I'm going to try to I'm going to show take you through uh, figuring out uh, which what the absolute configuration is at each carbon. Uh, first, I'm going to do a little nomenclature. Uh, so again, this would be a cyclohexanol derivative. So cyclohexanol, even though it results in higher numbers. Uh, in cyclohexanols, the alcohol winds up being carbon number one. Uh, and so we'd number it, uh, as I've shown, one, two, three, four, five, six. You have to go either, you know, clockwise or counterclockwise. And so we go, uh, in this case, counterclockwise because that gives us three, four rather than four, five if we went clockwise. So this winds up being, again, alphabetical order, three chloro, four methyl, methyl cyclohexanol. As I said, cyclohexanols, the OH is the one position, you don't have to say one cyclohexanol. Clearly then, uh, there could be an enantiomer, in fact, let's do that, let's draw the, well, actually, take a second, uh, draw the mirror image of, of this cyclohexane. Okay, so pause it, Put a little mirror plane right there, draw the mirror image. Go ahead and pause it and do that. All right, so I'm going to just, this is our mirror. Cyclohexane reflects like a cyclohexane. Chloride's closer to the mirror here, so it's got to be closer to the mirror there. Methyl there. No H there. Okay. You can pause this, play with this. There's no way to superimpose these two molecules. They're non-superimposable mirror images. Therefore, their relationship is that they're enantiomers. That should be a plural. And if you look at the name, <clears throat> do the numbers again. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the name of the enantiomer as drawn is exactly the same. So we have to have something uh, to designate that, and it's either going to be R or S at each number. And then you actually here do have to put in R or S, or you have to put in a number because you have to tell us that it's R or S on the one position. Okay, so I'm going to erase the enantiomer for now uh, and all this stuff, and I'm going to take you through figuring out each absolute configuration. So go ahead and, if you want, pause and write this down, anything you missed. Okay. Okay, so let's do let's do the top one first. There's a methyl sticking out at us. There has to be a hydrogen then behind. Again, that's sort of our best case scenario for figuring out R and S. I'm going to erase the name as well. Okay, so do your do your priorities. Carbon, carbon, carbon. So we're we're looking at we're looking at this chiral carbon, the starred chiral carbon right now. So carbon, 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 H. H is priority group four. The carbon's all tie. So now consider the next carbon. This carbon is bonded to an H, a C, or sorry, an H, a C, and a Cl. This carbon is bonded to two H's and a C. That carbon is bonded to three H's. Okay, so now it's atomic weight highest atomic weight at the first point of difference. So the H's cancel, that chlorine beats the carbon, beats anything there. So this side will be one, carbon beats three hydrogens, two, three. Okay, so now you're in it, because the priority group four is already in the back, we just have to draw our circle. All right, so one to two to three, one to two to three, that's a clockwise motion, so this chiral center is R. All right, so pause, work through that. <laughs> I don't think I asked you to do that this time. Okay, so now go ahead and pause at any point in here. I'm going to erase all this, 
and I'm going to do the next carbon, the carbon with the chlorine on it. But hit pause, figure out the absolute configuration, R or S, at this carbon. you're back. We're going to do this carbon. I'm going to put a star by it to indicate that's the one we're doing. There you go. So now assign priorities. Well, there's hydrogen coming out of the board at us. So that carbon is bonded to a chlorine, a hydrogen, and two carbons. Chlorine is going to be one. Again, highest atomic weight wins. This is now not about volume, right? Steric analysis, which is the most stable conformation, that's about volume of the substituent. In doing this, it's, it's accounting. So what has the at highest atomic weight? Chlorine has a higher atomic weight than carbon or hydrogen. Hydrogen's lower than any of them, so it's four. Carbon and carbon tie, so then what are they? H, H, and C, right? Two H's and a C, this carbon, is bonded to two C's and an H. Okay, this OH doesn't enter into it. The OH is uh, next after the chlorine. The OH is the heaviest atom in the molecule, but it never enters into the calculation up here. So HCC beats H HC. So this is two and this is three. And now, like I said, the H, the low priority group, is sticking out at you. So you can. You can either try to turn the molecule around, but then you've got to keep everything the same as you turn it around. I find it easiest with the low group pointed out at you. Take the circle and just take the reverse. So the circle is one to two to three. It's counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, if you've set the molecule up with the low priority group away, is, is S. But because of the low, so you have to take the reverse, that means this would be R. Okay, I hope you got R. If you didn't, work through it again. You maybe rewind and go through it again. Uh, okay, so now, go ahead, hit pause again. We're gonna do our last remaining carbon, the one with the OH. So hit pause. I'm gonna, again, tidy up the board, clean it up uh, while you get stuff written down. I also want to point out a wedge is a wedged group is R, a dashed group is R. Don't get in the habit of thinking a wedge means R or S or a dash means R or S. So now let's look at the carbon bearing the hydroxyl, the one carbon. So again, do your well, let's put in our H. So we have an H sticking out at us. In red there. So now again, oxygen, carbon, carbon, hydrogen. Oxygen is one, higher atomic weight than carbon. H is four, lower atomic weight than carbon. The two carbons tie. So now look at what this carbon's bonded to. Two H's coming off and a C. H, H, C. This carbon has, again, two hydrogens and a carbon. H, H, C. Again, these tie. H, H, and C ties H, H, and C. Let's go to the next carbon. This carbon has H, H, and C. Right, there's the C. This carbon has a chlorine, a C, and an H. So that's HCCl. And now you're comparing just these two. You don't have to compare it back to OH, right? Chlorine is heavier than OH. But we've already decided that's one. As soon as you decide a group is a number, one or four, out it goes. So chlorine beats carbon. And that means this group is two, and this group is three. OK. 
Okay. So you've assigned the priorities. Now, draw your circle. One to two to three goes counterclockwise. But once again, the low priority group is pointed at you. So that's the reverse of what conning goal prelog requires. So take the reverse of what your arrow. So a counterclockwise arrow would normally indicate S, but with a low priority group pointed at you, it's going to indicate R. All right. Very good. So all three are R. And the name of this molecule then is So the proper name is 3R chloro, 4R methyl, 1R cyclohexanol. Okay, so, uh, okay, I'm going to stop the video and we're going to do a part two to this video.